about 35 years ago when we were using novel methods to study cell surfaces in the immune system, we stumbled across the, a modification of proteins, which is basically a single monosaccharide derived from glucose, but it has a nitrogen and an acetyl group at the two position. And it turns out this modification had never been seen before. And lots of people had studied the cells of the immune system for glycosylation for many years. And so I have to say, I didn't believe it. And the more we looked at it, we found that it was not on the outside of cells where all other sugars are, that are on proteins are found. It was on the inside, mostly in the nucleus and cytoplasm. So that got kind of weird too. So we, uh, this, a graduate student was a fir you know first year graduate student, and these were like her first experiments. And so I just thought there must be some kind of artifact here. And anything. so anyway, we beat it to death for well over a year before we finally published a JBC paper describing it. And then uh, probably had published like three other papers in pretty significant journals before people in our own field even started believing it. And so, you know, it's when you discover something completely unusual, it takes a while for people to believe it. And, and I was working on a lot of other things, but when we finally decided that this was interesting and important, my whole lab started working on ogluknacolation, which is a terrible to say word, but a, it, that is what it is chemically. And the long and the short of it has turned out to be a nutrient sensor that modifies almost all, a whole bunch of proteins, probably almost all the proteins in the nucleus and cytoplasm in some way, or at least many of them. And it it's regulates pretty much everything the cells does in response to nutrients. It's, it's more like a, a rheostat. In other words, the existing signaling pathways and transcription methods are, of course, carried out by methods, by mechanisms that we know about. But what this does is it modulates it in response to how much you how much energy your cell has how much food it has and it's a way for the cell to slow down or speed up flux through pathways in response to if there's enough glucose or energy and things like that and it's only in the last maybe five years or so that the technology has reached to the point where we can actually really under begin to understand what's going on with this modification so it's it's really an exciting time i just heard an outstanding talk by Linda Shea Wilson that described uh, uh, systems biology approach to understand the networks of ogluknacolation and this is where it's heading and I think it's really going to be an exciting time. The reason it's exciting is it's fundamentally important in diabetes. It, the prolonged levels of ogluknac actually underlie glucose toxicity. It explains why having high glucose makes you sick and it's also involved in Alzheimer's disease uh, there's no example yet of a cancer that where this system isn't elevated. So there's just tons of unknowns, and uh, it's. A, it, I think particularly if for young people, if I was starting over right now, I mean, s studying the role of this in transcription and in the brain would be just a gold mine because so little is known about it, and it's really important. So. Uh, in fact, I recently have decided that I'm not going to retire. I'm going to keep working until I'm dead because I think this is really the most fun I'm ever having. So I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> I'm excited. I, I think the, uh, you know, I, I had, I'm, I'm probably like most members of the society. I had no idea of all the many things that the ASBMB does for its membership and for biochemistry and, and basically uh, molecular biology, me molecular scientist in general and uh, so one of the you know the big push is to get more young people to join the society to get more people who are doing uh, uh, molecular mechanistic or me molecular life science research to be involved in the society the big deal about ASBMB is it has a large voice together with FASEB and other societies and the other, the other thing is that it's a great opportunity for young people. I tell young faculty in my department, you need to go to these meetings, give talks. That's how you get known. That's how people remember. There's a good chance when you give a talk, somebody in the audience is going to be on the study section that reviews your grant. And they go, oh, yeah, I remember that talk. That has a huge influence on whether a grant gets funded or not. And so going to these kind of meetings is really important for people's careers, it's important for all kinds of reasons, and I really hope 
in the in the next two years when I'm the president, we're going to do all kinds of stuff.